very much a key theme that we're looking at across Africa right now that had been cited as a trend in 2012 as a case where we got subdued growth on the one hand and rising inflation. This was pointed out by Tendai BT last week. Uh, we had inflation ticking up to 4.03%. And a big concern right now is a rising food import bill. Just give us your, your thoughts on the, on the key shortages we're going to have and how that might fuel inflation going forward. Definitely. Thank you. Uh, I think, like you rightly pointed out, uh, I think inflation pressures are pointing to the fact that uh, Zimbabwe could be facing uh, significant uh, food shortages. If you, if you remember the figures that we have, is uh, last year in terms of maize, which is our, one of our staple food, we produced about 1.4 million tons of, of, of maize. Now, come this year, we are roughly at 980 million, um, 980,000 tons. So there is a deficit. The other, the, the deficit would be, would be, I think, to some extent, uh, be bridged by, you know, uh, some of the surplus that we had, I think, in, in our coffers. Uh, but ideally, you find out actual deficit of maize should translate to about uh, close to 100 million uh, import bill. And I think a similar figure of $100 million could be required for wheat. As you know, we are not able to produce enough wheat for, for, for our consumption. So when you take those things into account, you find out that your inflation pressures on the vis-a-vis uh, -vis in terms of food and so on and so on, they have become amplified in the later part of the year. Yeah. And we view that should be able to feed into prices and we should be able to see our food basket rising and fitting into overall inflation in the economy. And at the same time, we alluded to the fact that growth is a concern right now. We know that government revenue has underperformed, and it's really been around the lack of revenue coming through from the diamond sector. Marange Fields only generating $30.5 million in the first quarter, and that's versus the target of $123 million. So in terms of government meeting its revenue projections for this year, is it all about the diamond sector, or could we start getting uh, some growth and some, some revenue through from other sectors like gold, which is uh, performing pretty well right now. Sure, sure, sure. I think ideally we should be able to avoid uh, uh, relying on a narrow base for us to generate revenue. It would be good for the country to broaden its revenue base so that if there are any shocks, the country does, is able to at least withstand such, a, such any, any negative shocks in the system. Like you say, I think there needs, there's need for transparency in terms of the diamond revenues coming through. If the diamond revenues are transparent and coming through into the system, that complementing the, the you know, expected um, gold deliveries, I think on the gold sector, the country seems to have been doing well. I think uh, indications are that on average, the country is producing about 1,000 uh, kgs a, a month. So, and, and, and the outlook looks great in terms of uh, maybe these guys, uh, you know, positioning themselves in terms of uh, increasing output. So if it's complemented by other revenue flows from diamond, even from tobacco, from cotton, that should to some extent cushion the country instead of uh, relying on a narrow base. Yeah, and as you say, those tobacco numbers coming through quite strongly. Uh, let's just focus to the financial sector because Finmark Trust had a survey in terms of banking penetration. You're looking at Zimbabwe's banking penetration of 24% up against South Africa's 63%. And uh, the survey results show that 40% of Zimbabweans are excluded from the, from the formal financial sector. What type of response have we had from policymakers to this? Definitely. I, I think when you look at it in, in terms of uh, the 40% that are not served by the banking sector, it's a huge number. And I think the, the problem is how do banks reach out to these banks, uh, to, the, to, this, to these people, marginalized people. And one of the issues that I think the policies will try to focus on is to say, how best do we put the service to these guys at a low cost? And when you look at the survey that you're referring to, I think 85%, it says 85% of Zimbabweans own cell phones. So it represents another avenue where if we are able to develop our cell phone banking, we should be able to reach out to these guys at a lower cost and, in, in, in avoiding the brick and mortar uh, channels. So it represents one of the avenues where the bank should be able to you know, leverage on that and be able to offer services to the marginalized people. Yeah, utilizing those innovative mobile banking models that have been uh, well used in East Africa. James, thank you so much for joining us today. James Wadi, Group Economist from Bank ABC.